In the previous section, we saw that we could directly construct a list by simply listing the items that compose that list. But in this section, we'll see that there are several other ways to make lists. One of the ways that uh, a list can be created is as the output of some other function or method. And we're going to take a look at three of these functions or methods that have their return values as lists. The first one is one that we saw earlier when we were looking at the OS or operating system library. And then here is a cool function that comes from the random module, which we'll use several other places. And then finally, a string method that we did not talk about before, the split method. So let's go ahead and see how these work. So here I have uh, imported the list dir function from the OS module. And then, as you may recall, if we do not pass any argument into the um, list dir, it will find the uh, file listing for the files that are in the current working directory, whatever that happens to be. So I will go ahead and run that. And my current working directory is my home directory. So I'm basically getting all the files in my home directory. And you'll notice that there in square brackets, the file names are strings, and each one is separated by a comma. And this is the structure that we saw for lists, this is just a very long list. Uh, the sample function comes from the random module. So this time I'm going to try uh, importing the entire library. And so when I Im import the entire library, then I have to put the library name as a prefix in front of the function that I want to use. And the sample function requires two arguments. The first argument is a range, and we'll talk about ranges a little bit later on in this lesson. It's basically telling you uh, the range of possible items that it should sample from. And then the second argument is the number of samples that we want to take from, or the number of items in the sample that we take from the population. So we can think of this as like drawing pieces of paper from a hat. So first, we will ask, prompt the user, how many items are there in the hat? Take that input, turn it into an integer number, and then that sets the population of how many things there are in the hat. We'll do a similar thing here for n, the number of items in the sample, and then we'll pass uh, the population in as a range is the first argument, and then n as the second argument. And then the output will put in a variable called pull from hat and print it off. So let's go ahead and try that. So let's say that there are 100 items in the hat, and we want to draw five. So this uh, has produced a list of five randomly selected numbers from the hat. Let's try it again. 100, let's draw another five. So we get a different set of five numbers. So that's one of the um, characteristics of the random uh, module. Each of the outcomes of the methods or functions in that library change each time you run them. And of course, we don't have to use 100. We could use any population size we want. We could put 10 items in the hat and have it draw three. And these are the three that it picks. <clears throat> the last example here is the split string method. So just to differentiate, you'll notice that both of these um, things that I used before were functions. And I inserted the things that I wanted it to operate on as arguments since split is a, me a string method, it has to be attached onto the end of the string object itself. So the first thing I will do is assign this sentence as the value of a string object. 
and then take that uh, sentence and split it according to uh, where the positions are of the spaces. So basically each set of characters that are separated by spaces will end up as a different item in the list. So if we run this, we can see it's created a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items. Each one is a word. Well, actually, technically, the last item is a word in a period. So it is just separating the characters. It doesn't actually know which ones are letters and which ones are something else. 